There's a stereotype about vegans. I need to be more specific. One of the stereotypes about vegans is that we're all affluent white people living a lifestyle inaccessible to anyone falling outside of those boundaries. Well, my guests today shatter that stereotype and share how they make veganism work in Venezuela on $30 a month. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan and welcome to another Vegan Nugget. Something I'm very passionate about is making veganism welcoming to people of all backgrounds, colors, creeds, cultures, genders, etc. While the limited idea that veganism is only accessible to upper middle class white people is nowhere near true, there are of course individuals in varying circumstances, such as food deserts, that can make healthy eating extremely difficult. You can see some of my videos touching on this issue in the video description below along with resources. Stay tuned to the channel for more to come in that vein, as well as an entire Vegan on a Budget series. But today I wanted to introduce you to Cory and Aurora, sisters in Venezuela who are vegan on an income many would find challenging. They did want to be clear that they feel privileged and fortunate to make the money that they do. The financial and political situations in Venezuela are very complex, so they do their best to simplify for those unfamiliar. I'm going to turn it over to Cory and Aurora. Hello, I'm Cory and I'm 28. Uh, hi, I'm Aurora and I'm 26 and we're both from Venezuela and we're currently living in Venezuela. I know that there, there's, a, there's a very complex political and, and financial crisis within Venezuela. Can you, at least for our viewers who, who aren't familiar, try to, to summarize it as, as best as you can? Venezuela for the last 15 years has been, has been living a really intense uh, political and economical crisis to the point where our inflation is about 200% per year, which means that every time, even if I start making more money, it's really less. So every time they give me a raise of 40, 45%, inflation I, will, go. will go up and I will make less money. So that's why I make $30 uh, uh, a month because the currently, inf- yeah, currently, which um, every month I make a little less. I always sum it up to 30 but uh, two months ago, I was making forty dollars a month. <laughs> the thing is, the there's there is an uh, a governmental official estimate which is unrealistic because we have two versions of the dollar. We have the official version, which nobody can get their hands on unless you're part of the government, and then we have the dollar that everyone can get their the hands on. The black market, the dollar. black market dollar, and that's all our prices are based on black market dollar. Everything is based on black market dollar except our wages, which is uh, which are based on um, official. Uh, so so that, so by black market dollar, I make about thirty dollars a month, and I believe you make about twenty to fifteen. Fifteen yeah. to twenty, yeah. That's that's what we live month here. So that that's really like the gist of it. Inflation, politics, economics. It's just been a big mess. And that's how our wages are so low. And uh, the, also um, the uh, control that the government has tried to, to onset on, on this whole problem is through rationing? Yeah, rations. We, we, we are very heavily rationed, like, like I was discussing before. Um, it kind of sounds like Big Brother, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it but totally it is. is. It, it actually, one of the, that, that's usually the comparison uh, people make is that we're living in 1984. Could you speak a little bit more to, to the rationing of, of food and how that works within Venezuela? Alright, there's two ways of rationing. There is by our ID number. According to what number your ID ends, you get a day of the week where you can go to grocery stores and buy um, ration, ration products. Exactly. So, uh, for instance, hers ends in eight. Mine ends in seven. I go on Thursdays and she goes on Fridays. We cannot buy ration products outside of those days. And of course, since they are ration products, they are products that have, are, are also a lot, a lot cheaper than, than you could find them in anywhere else because they're controlled by the government. We have to queue for a really, really, really long time. Yeah, I mean, there is no way actually for me to go to the supermarket on the day that I have to go because I have to work. I work from 9 to 6, which is the, the, you know, the normal working schedule here, but 
the queues, the, the shortest one I've been in, which I was like, please, can I go? There's no soap at my house, um, was 45 minutes. That's the shortest queue I've done. And we have, uh, there's a supermarket not too far from where I work where people actually sleep overnight so that they can get to the products. And, and these are first need products. Yeah, these aren't, these, these aren't like particular products for these. These are soap, uh, sugar. Um, and, well, in case for for meat eaters, it's it's uh, milk, milk, chicken, um, feminine products. Went disappeared for months. For we months. could not find feminine products. Toilet paper also disappeared for months. And, and actually, we all the toilet paper we have is from the black market because then people will sell them up towards to 1,000% their original price. Mm -hmm. And also when you go buy, you're only allowed to buy a certain amount. Mm -hmm. For example, the other day I bought beans and I was only allowed to have one bag of uh, one kilo, which is 2.5 pounds of black beans. As a vegan, you know that 2.5 pounds of black beans is not good for a month and we don't know when that product is gonna come back. That's the other thing. If people get into such a desperate, uh, like situation, yeah. situation where they fight over things and it gets really dangerous actually. It's not just queuing and the amount of time that it takes and the fact that we both work um, full time so we can't actually go on the days that we that we could go. It's it's also that it gets very very dangerous. People get incredibly violent. There was a, a shootout yeah. in, in the grocery store closest to us. That people started shooting each other because they needed to get to the front of the line. With all of the the issues of rationing and the, and the challenges, how do you navigate that as a vegan? Vegetables and fruits are not rationed. So not you yet. can, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go into the stores and buy them every day of the week and not, have, yeah, and not have to queue for them. Initially. And there's another good thing uh, about uh, this whole situation is that there are a lot of farmers um, that, that offer their products uh, regarding vegetables and fruits. Um, outside the the, the groceries, supermarket, yeah. the supermarket, and um, they are <laughs> and they're organic because obviously they don't. It's not a they're small farms. Yeah, they're small local farmers. We're not saying rationing is good in any way, though. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah. those are vegan solutions to yeah. rationing. <laughs> yeah, is there anything within Venezuelan culture that is strongly anti-vegan that you can think of? I know a lot of you know there are certain cultures where where you know meat dishes are very central. And, and it just depending on different countries and cultures, is there anything in particular to Venezuela that you think might make it more challenging on a social level to be vegan? Everything. <laughs> yes, because our, our uh, food and our traditional food is very uh, dairy-based, especially. Yeah. More than meat-based, I think it's very dairy-based. We were, we were talking about when she went vegan, she, was, she called me one day and she's like, what can I eat in the morning? <laughs> because, because there's no, like we can't leave our house like we can't like just leave and find food that isn't doesn't have dairy in it, especially for breakfast food. Yeah, everything has cheese in it. We our our culture is very based on our our handmade cheeses, um, so it, it's very hard. And also, uh, just going out with friends, there is something very famous here called choripanada, which is just basically get together, buy a bunch of sausages, and stick them on bread, and that's all you eat. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these. Um, these like they're called, like barbecues, I guess. Don't even have any vegetables there. There will be maybe avocado, uh, guacamole. Yeah. But but otherwise, like if we went to those kind of situations and the people there weren't <laughs> aware that we're vegan, we wouldn't be able. No, to eat. we would have to eat beforehand. Christmas dishes. There is not a single vegan Christmas dish except for rice <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. But and the funny thing is like. We found people that make all of these things vegan here. One thing I wanted to ask, I know that you, we've talked about how, you know, you're living on $30 a, day, uh, a month or so. And then you also mentioned, though, that that's, that's pretty good pay, though, for, for your country. What would you say to, to people who are in the, in the lower ranges of pay? Do you feel that being vegan is still possible for them? And, and what kind of advice could you give to people who might want to kind of explore going vegan but, but might not even have the amount of, of income that you have at this point? It's actually cheaper to be vegan here. Yeah. Because uh, one of the, the most expensive things to get is animal products. 
Yeah, they're very uh, aside from beans that, that are also expensive here, if, if you know, un unless you queue and do all this process to get them at a, at a regulated price. But it's actually a lot cheaper because vegetables are cheaper. Exactly. It's, it's much cheaper to be vegan here. And I would also recommend uh, looking up what really is in nutrients, like in your food. Because for instance, we have a mango tree in front. We, the mangoes fall down. Kids are constantly eating it, so it's very cheap. In fact, it's for free because uh, it's in the street. Yeah, it's all, it's in the streets. We have mango trees growing all over the place. We also have avocados are incredibly cheap here because it, it's it's a very it's like a national product. Yeah, so are bananas and stuff like that. And uh, and they're literally like on the street. You you see people like throwing rocks at, at the trees yeah. to like make the, the the ones that are like ready to fall fall down and fall and down stuff and like, like take them. Yeah, so actually I think uh, what would be most important is not how much it is because it's completely cheaper. M my mom is always so shocked how little we spend on, on food. It's just really educating yourself on what nutrients you actually need and where you can get them. We don't have like almond milk, we don't have tofu, seitan, none of that. And yet I just got tests back because I went to the doctor for, for work. and. The doctor was like, "You are an extremely healthy person, mm -hmm. and and we don't even spend too much over over our wages in, in food. We spend actually much less than most of the." Rest. I'd say we we spend at least uh, forty percent less yeah, than, than most people. Than most people. So. Is there a vegan culture where you live in Venezuela, or I know you can't really speak to the country as a whole, but is there a vegan culture there? What kind of you know reception or community at all is there in your area? Well, I think we were both surprised at how many vegans there are in Venezuela. We don't really know <laughs> any of them. We just know each other. <laughs> but um, like, I started finding out there's a, a veg fest in Venezuela that has uh, vegan food, and apparently it's a huge deal because it happens about once every three months, which I think is more than you than than, than you'd expect. Yeah, and in most places, I know that they have like an annual. Veg fest and in here in Minnesota it happens every like three months and then, then I started like researching online I found there's a very big like uh, to go service for vegan eaters um, they're 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 very open at restaurants we went to a restaurant on mother on Mother's Day and I remember she talked to the chef because she was there first and she was like my sister is a vegan she doesn't eat any of this this it. and he was like I will make her a special meal. And and he was and then he came out and like he didn't want to shake my hand because he had been cooking meat. He's like, I'm sorry, I don't want to shake your hand. And I, and he was very open. I think yeah, he was very home. very polite about it. And and especially here, I mean, I haven't found like people making nasty comments or being rude. Uh, not at all. They're actually very curious yeah. as to you know they they do ask like the typical. So what do you eat? Where's your protein? <laughs> and, so yeah. So there's there's apparently a a big vegan culture in Venezuela. We are just not very like we, we don't know a lot of people in it. Yeah. But it's it's really not it's not that hard to find people with common ground. I know some people, especially people in you know countries of privilege, will sometimes argue that. Oh well, you know, if someone's in a, you know, a country that is, you know, a poverty-stricken country per se, you know, how they're how they're labeled, you know, trying to tell them to be vegan is ignoring these greater issues of what's of what's you know the problems that are going on and inherent within within the countries. I, I think there is a, a, a there is a YouTube video I watched where it said that once you know the truth, you can't go back. I can't go back. That's just basically it. And and you think the way the way the question was phrased that this is another problem to throw on on top of all my problems. This has solved some of my problems. Yeah. So it, it hasn't really been a throw on more trouble and over your trouble. It it I went vegan overnight. It wasn't even like okay now I have to figure out what I'm gonna eat. No no no. It was just like well tomorrow I'm just not gonna have any animal products. And that was as simple as that. I understand that if you were a mother with five kids to take care of, and 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 this is also an issue, I can understand where that, like, where that, where I'm privileged in that sense. But I think for that mother, it would actually help if if somebody just told her, "You can't feed your kids a healthy diet 
and not have to queue for 45 to 3 hours a day to try and find enough animal products to feed them. And also there's a, an issue in our country, especially with so much poverty of um, cardiac issues and high cholesterol and, and stuff like that. And it also comes from people not realizing that they can get all these nutrients from better sources. All right, well, I just wanted to thank you both for taking the time out of your day to, to you know, share your story, share your experience, and some of your challenges and victories, and, and just kind of help people out there who are in similar circumstances, and, and even those who are in completely opposite circumstances, to see that veganism is, is really something that crosses all kinds of boundaries. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed hearing Corey and Aurora's experiences. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you live in a country or culture with unique challenges to a vegan lifestyle? Do you fall outside of the stereotypical vegan? Which I personally think almost every vegan does. Let me know in the comments. If you liked this look into veganism in Venezuela, do give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I put out fresh content covering all aspects of veganism every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays. To help support Bite Size Vegan's educational efforts, please see the support links below or click on the Nugget Army icon there or the link in the sidebar. Now go live vegan, bust some vegan myths, and I'll see you soon. Hey Emily, I'm filming again because I hadn't realized that the line is actually goes all the way around. All the way around.